Greetings everybody, John Tar here with Wiki Game Guides trying to answer the question Should you buy Assassin's Creed Syndicate? Uh, Ubisoft sent me an early review copy of this game and I think the number one question people have is Is Assassin's Creed Syndicate better than Unity? And does it have the same frame rate problems and glitches that Unity had? Because I know a lot of people got burned by that game and they love this franchise so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say that this game is a lot better than Unity. It, I'm playing this on the PlayStation 4 right now, and just it, it looks absolutely beautiful. Just sitting on the river, on the River Thames here, looking out a Big Ben off in the distance, like it's just so serene. And this is one of the things I just love about Assassin's Creed so much. It's just sitting up on one of these high perches, just looking off in the distance and seeing like the boats going around underneath all the people going by and it's this huge city and it's just it's just absolutely beautiful uh, so in this video I'm going to show you some of the new features of this game including the rope launcher uh, switching between the different characters the map the skills and uh, a mission or two so uh, this is one of the sync points Oops, let's go up and do the nice leap of faith of course as you would expect from Assassin's Creed so this is the one of the sink points in the River Thames. God, such a beautiful view of the city. There's so many like there's, there's a ton of like missions involved or involving jumping between the boats and sabotaging boats and stuff like that. And like the moving platforms and the trains and the buggies and all that stuff in this game is really fun. It really makes a it, it, Assassin's Creed. It's not a brand new formula. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that it's a brand new game, but it's certainly a big step forward from Unity. And while it may not be the revolution that you would hope that you saw from Assassin's Creed 2 to Brotherhood or from 1 to 2, it is still an amazing game. Um, so ooh, let's try to use the rope launcher here. Oh, every time, every once in a while it shows up. Okay, so that was the new rope launcher. You can use it to basically quickly pull yourself up to high platforms or use it to bridge gaps between buildings. So the rope launcher is not as consistent as I would like it to be. Uh, you can't hold down L1 and get it to aim where you want. Like right now, I want to go to one of those platforms up there, so I just have to kind of walk a little bit closer and just keep jamming on L1 until the little pop-up shows up. It'd be, it'd be very nice if you could just have the L1, if you could hold L1 and then kind of point it like a crosshair, but you just have to kind of hope that it shows up where you want it to. And like when it works and you get to traverse huge gaps like that and just go straight to the top of a building and use that to your advantage, it's really fun. But a, more often than not, it's just frustrating. Like why can't I, go to the top of the building that I know is a much shorter distance than that space I just traveled, like right now, like how do I get to the top of this building? I can't. A half a second ago I could, but I don't have the absolute perfect angle. And now I hit L1 and then it just rockets me to the top. Um, so it's it's an interesting mechanic, but it's not perfect by any means. Uh, it does create some very interesting situations where you, that you can use to your advantage. So pretend there's a bad guy underneath me. And you can just drop. Oh, well, I was supposed to land on the roof of that thing and use that to run away out of there, but you can uh, play some uh, horse theft auto. <laughs> There's a lot of, well, not a lot of car driving, but you can use carts to travel whenever you want in this game, and they don't chase you around and give you a five-star rating like Grand Theft Auto, but uh, it's certainly... One of the interesting, you know, new twists in this game that, you know, there, there's a couple horse cart chases and a bunch of races and stuff like that at side quests. Um, and you can, let's see, so those are some enemies right there that I just ran. And you can, like, knock over people that are chasing you too. Yeah, these guys aren't chasing me, so it's gonna be hard to roll them over. But, uh, yeah, you can destroy carts and stuff like that. Now, I've tried my damnedest to launch one of these carts off the bridge into the water and you just cannot, like, I, I've not figured out a way to do it yet. There there are no jumps, there's no nothing in this game, so I was kind of disappointed about that. Like, I really wanted to get weird with the horse and buggies in this game, but you cannot. Um, especially, okay, I'll show you right now. When you hijack one of these uh, taxi buggies, okay, so there's one guy on the roof. Oh, nuts, there's nobody inside. So I have, oh, there's a couple of guys on top. Let's see, okay. So if I hijack the driver, those guys will just sit on the top 
And if you drive around like a crazy female buggy driver, uh, because females were historically bad at driving buggies, not just cars, right? Um, they will not go anywhere. So anyway, uh, let's do a mission real quick. Ooh. Throwing knives are pretty amazing in this game. The AI is not particularly bright. Um, it's it's Assassin's Creed. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, Metal Gear. Even though Metal Gear, <laughs> like saying Metal Gear has great AI for a stealth game, isn't really saying much. So this side quest right here. Let's take a look at the map and the skills and stuff like that before I start this mission. So this side quest right here is a uh, child liberation mission. There's a whole bunch of child workers working in this area, and if I do that, I'm gonna uh, clear out this little red section of the city of London. If I clear out all the side quests and do all the side quests and clear out all the missions in the city of London, then I will have conquered this district, which makes more of my gang members, the Rooks, populate this area and less blighters who are the enemy gang. Uh, I've conquered Whitechapel, half of London, uh, the Thames, Southwark, I know I'm saying that wrong, freaking Worcestershire sauce, that Southwark, I have no idea, Lambeth, I haven't even touched Westminster, I'm not gonna even try to touch a British accent, I can't do accents, I've accepted that about myself. And unless Hank Azaria can teach me how to do them, I never will. Um, and so let's take a look at the skills. So one of the great things about this game is I, I've been playing as Eevee so far. All you have to do is hit pause and then hit right stick and you switch to Jacob instantly. It's that simple, it's great. And the game encourages you basically to use Jacob as the melee fighter and Eevee as the stealth fighter by when you look at the skill tree, Jacob and Evie share experience. So you, if you play only as Jacob, they will both level up uh, at the same rate. You have the same skill points to spend, but they do not share skill points. So Jacob has a couple skills that are exclusive to him uh, with these little blue triangles, like doing more um, mutilate damage, or not mutilate damage, more successful rapid attack damage, or... We can bring an enemy to near death, blah, blah, blah. Whereas Eevee has these throwing knife exclusive skills and bonus stealth stat skills and basically turning invisible completely when you're in sneak mode and just sitting still. Um, and Jacob has these two as well. Uh, counter shots are automatic headshots and less damage overall. So you can build Eevee to be a combat master and you can build Jacob to be a stealth master, but the game doesn't really... Like, if you want to be the absolute best stealth player, you're going to want to use Eevee. Um, inventory. There's three different categories of weapons. There's brass knuckles. There are cane swords. And there are kukris. Uh, this is the one I think I want to use right now. This is the best one I have. Um, they're all pretty badass. They all have, like all the other Assassin's Creed games, you should really switch between the three different classes throughout the course of the game to see the different animations because they are brutal. The execution animations are visceral and they make me feel like I'm getting my legs and arms and head stabbed is like as I'm playing the game. Uh, gauntlets just basically improve overall damage. Firearms are just your sidearm pistol that you can shoot or that they can aim and get headshots from distance but obviously they're very loud and they're gonna draw a lot of attention but you can also use them during combat as part of a combo. So if you do like melee, melee, stun, tool, then the tool is the pistol and you'll just get a quick headshot assuming it hits. Um, the belts increase defense and stealth and belts are exclusive to Jacob. Uh, outfits, Jacob actually is the only one that can get this Ezio outfit, Eevee cannot. Uh, let's check that out. Uh, and when you use the Ezio outfit, that kind of overrides all of the other uh, cosmetic upgrades. Uh, you need different colors. Well, you could do different colors if you're doing the different outfits as well, but not with this Ezio outfit. And those are purely cosmetic. Uh, basic, oh, I already showed the skills. Let's look at the upgrades. Simple things like more bullets, more uh, knives, more hallucinogenic darts, more health, more 
simple stuff like that. Uh, and gear that you have to craft by finding special crafting materials, by getting the chests and all that kind of stuff. Very basic stuff. I'll get in the e-store at the end of this because that is kind of a bummer. Um, oh, right, I wanted to use Eevee. So you just hit start, switch back to Eevee. And now I'm Eevee. So for this mission, what I have to do is I have to free all the children and kill all the foremen. Right? Sounds easy. Top left. So what I'm going to do is I'm starting from the top, obviously. When you're using the, uh, the vision mode, hitting left stick in, you can mark, if you just look at all the enemies for a second, I, I, I have this uh, upgraded quite a bit, so the radius of the vision is very hu is huge. Um, and I, if you just look at them for a second, it marks them. Mm. So he's walking right at them. He's going to throw a shit fit if I kill his buddy while he's looking at him. So the foreman... Mm, okay. Kill this guy. Let's see if I can get to a... Uh, nope. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's the first time that I'd seen her turn completely invisible. Wow, that's actually kind of cool. That seems kind of cheap. Um, so one of the interesting things about this game... Ooh, hello, Glitch. I haven't seen many of you this game. Well, of course, I got that during the review. So this game <clears throat> suffers from open-world jank, whatever that means to you, you know? Uh, it's kind of not... It's not perfect by any means. But it's certainly not, like, busted in the way that Unity was. Uh, so I killed him. So now all I really have to do is free the children. Free the children. I just love the children. Sure. I, will be back. I just want them to join me in my, in my mansion. And play blanket. Oh, so this guy's going to come up the stairs. Oh, no, he's not going to come up the stairs. Let's stab you in the back. Oh, punch him in the balls and knife in the neck. Like, the animations in this game for when you kill people are amazing. They are, they're just so visceral. And when I get, like, when you get in huge hand-to-hand -hand, uh, combat fights and you, like, melee execute three people in a row, it's just, they're absolutely brutal. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show off some of the multi-kill combos here. Oh, maybe I will. Uh, all right, let's not free the children. Screw the children. Wait, no, that sounds wrong. Don't screw the children. <laughs> let's kill her. Nope. Oh yeah, she was a lookout. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna get in a fight with all three of these guys. Uh oh. All right, so I'm gonna try to get a triple kill here and show a little bit off of the melee hand-to-hand -hand combat. So it's much more, it's very Batman-like, right? Like, every because every game recently has been Batman-like. If so, that one guy that I just hurt, oh, dang it, just got in, like, a stun state. So if you get them in a stun state, oh, man, I didn't get a, even a double kill there. It's hard to get double kills, even. So no alarms have been triggered, so I'm going to get 100% completion on this mission. Now that I've freed these children, assuming I can climb up, you'd think you'd be able to climb up here, right? Every once in a while, it just gives you a headache. Like Assassin's Creed would, right? I mean, I'm... You'll be all right. Trust me. This game is really freaking fun. I'm having a blast with the setting, but I'm not going to say it's perfect. Uh, if you're new to the franchise, I would not recommend starting with this game. Assassin's Creed 2 or Assassin's Creed Brotherhood may be a better place to start. Um, if you felt burnt by Unity, but you still love this franchise, this series, then you will enjoy this game. If you feel kind of burned out on Assassin's Creed, and you're hoping for the next major step forward, like Brotherhood or Two offered, you're not going to get that with this game. But this is a great game, and I'm having a ton of fun with it. Um, yeah, and I think that's I, I I think I've showed off a lot of the major features of this game. Uh, Great setting, great combat, tons of collectibles. It's it's a great Assassin's Creed game. And 
technically much more sound than Unity. I have to keep reiterating that because Unity was so freaking bad on so many levels. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope this review helped you out in your purchasing decision. decision. And uh, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more Assassin's Creed Unity updates. I'm making a full 100% sync walkthrough and a Halo 5 walkthrough as well on Legendary, which will be coming very soon. And uh, yeah, let me know what your, fa uh, what your favorite Assassin's Creed game as of late has been in the comments, because I always like to see that. I think mine is Brotherhood. Mm, I know a lot of people love Black Flag. I'm expecting to see a lot of Black Flags in the comments. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think Brotherhood was my favorite one. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. And game on.